Hello everyone and welcome to yet another story analysis and today we're going into chapter 2 part 2 we're still going down the Viking story and we just got to Viking diplomacy so if you weren't caught up let me go ahead and fill you in so Apollyon has rallied the knights and she starts a raid on Valkenheim and she's made it so that the Vikings of Valkenheim are fighting amongst each other hurting each other trying their best just to cause utter pandemonium and now a raider has come down from the mountains to try to help to try to bring the vikings back together and he's currently beaten a raider named ragnar and is now up to something new so let's find out what that is the warborn grew soon much sooner than i anticipated only two warlords remain in Valkenheim: the raider and a vicious killer named sid with many of the warborn leaders held hostage, conflict was inevitable. Okay, so it looks like the last two warlords are about to go to fight. It's going to be our raider versus a warlord named Siv. Siv, I love these names. Ooh, already looking at a problem. This is an actual map in the game mode. You've probably seen me play it a few times. That catapult. Ah. Uh, no, it, it's a little, it's too big and um, not historically accurate, but we'll, we'll let it slide. I'm not going to, I've already ragged on that stuff before. It's not worth ragging on now, but I got a couple of great questions to answer today. So I'm going to go ahead and start answering those right now. So one of the first ones was, um, would Vikings have color coded things? Like would they wear the colors of their clan or something like that? And no, the answer is no. Vikings had very limited access to colored dye. Hold on. Sivs work. That's Ooh. just barbaric. I've seen you take scalps. It's different. Hey, he's Patrick Sates. Let him do what he wants. Yeah, that's Patrick Sates, guys. <laughs> Belmod may like to talk. I do not. You pirates are all a bunch of sore losers. Don't act all high and mighty when you probably just stole the money from someone else. I was Dio, and my destiny was to surpass all living things, including stand users. It's different. We'll just wait for your signal then. <laughs> okay, so uh, moving on. So what I was saying. Oh yeah, um, colored. Vikings only had access to certain colors because what you got to understand is at the time what they did was they took the materials for yarn and boiled it in plant-made color dye. So you'd get yellow, um, red, maybe purple, and blue. Blue would have been a much more expensive color. Blue would have been a color that would have been a little bit harder to get. It's only been seen in wealthy Viking tombs. Oh, shoot. Um, where'd they get the, where'd the flame come from? So you, um, you probably wouldn't see a lot of blue, but it, it wouldn't make sense for a Viking clan to say, okay, we're going to officially be the yellow clan. Let's all wear yellow into battle. Um, you probably wouldn't see that. And then another great question that I had on that note is, is the armor that we see in uh, For Honor for the Vikings accurate? And the answer is no, not really. Most of the Vikings in For Honor are wearing what looks like leather armor if they're wearing armor at all. And the thing about leather armor is while it did exist, it probably wasn't as prominent as people assume it was. We think it was prominent because it looks cool, and uh, we think, oh, well, then it must have been uh, something that a lot of non-knights wore, right? Like Vikings. And not really. You got to understand how armor was made back then. So let's talk about what they likely did wear. They probably wore linen armor, like cloth armor. Linen is made from flax plants. And if you had the right kind of plants to make linen armor, then you, what you would do is you would, um, what we do today and what was done a lot was you run it through chemicals and the chemicals purify it and make it softer and more comfortable to wear but that made it more expensive but if you didn't purify it with these chemicals and you just left it 
as was, then it would be much more coarse and tough and waxy, and thus it would be harder to break through, thus actually making it decent armor. Believe it or not, that was actually a way you could make armor. There's also gambeson armor, and a lot of people think that gambeson is j a joke, and they think, oh, it's not real armor. It's just basically a padded sweater, right? No, gambeson could stop arrows, it, depending on the amount of the, the thickness of it and the amount of uh, cloth used. It could be a very, very good protective material. So yeah, definitely, definitely love linen armor. Now leather armor was made, but it was a little bit more difficult to make. Um, leather armor, you see, first what you want to do is you want to get um, an ox or a old cow, and you want to get the back of the ox. You want to um, kill the ox, get the back of the ox, and get that hide, because that's the toughest hide on the cow. And then you need to skin it, then you need to cure it, then you need to... Um, tan it then you need to cut it and fit it for armor which needs to be fitted properly you want the leather armor to fit properly otherwise it's not going to do its job as well oh hold on Sir. Rider! we had a history i know it's you tone down the voice Guess that was the signal. Ah! Okay, anyway, so as I was saying, um, leather armor had to be fitted. It had to actually fit the body. Um, it had to be properly made. And all of this would make it more and more expensive and hard to make, at least to mass produce. If you had a wealthy Viking, maybe they could get themselves some quality leather maybe that would work but as a general rule no not really it wouldn't be something that you'd see a lot of um there's just not enough evidence for it um and before you say well, where's the evidence for gambeson it's hard to get that evidence because all of this is organic material it wears away over time what we do know is that wealthier vikings probably wore chain mail chain mail was actually something you'd see um traditional vikings wearing they probably wouldn't wear plate mail they probably didn't have access to that but Ch but definitely um, chain mail would have been what they probably wore. So um, excellent question. I really appreciate that question. Another question that I got is we see a female raider. I'm playing a female raider. Were there female Viking warriors or leaders? Um, according to some historical documentation, we do see that there were female Viking warriors known as shield maidens, which is what the Valkyrie was likely based on. Um, but as for female Viking warriors or, or leaders, no, probably not, if I'm being honest. There's not a lot of evidence to suggest that there were. Um, I mean, they might have existed, but there's no evidence to suggest it, and I haven't seen any evidence to suggest it. So if you find it, let me know, but as far as I know, I've never seen it. So, yeah. Um... Women in Norse culture were more content to just stay home and take care of things. Usually the men would go out and steal and then come back as pirates. And also you got to realize Norse had lives beyond just Viking. You know, they had lives beyond just raiding things. So don't assume that that's all there was to their livelihood. The Vikings worship gods of wood, of storms, and of stone. The samurai gods are of fire, of wind, and of thought. The gods of the knights are iron, steel, and gold. But power, that we agree on. Um, I'm probably going to need to do a series of videos just on the mythology of these three factions because that's very vague. Very, very vague. I don't discredit what it's saying, but there's more to it than that. There's a lot more to it than that. So guys, yeah, keep those questions coming. I love answering your questions about this stuff. Through example, we knights accidentally taught the Vikings the art of siege warfare. Oh. I like to think that, in turn, they showed us how to live free. That, okay, thank you, Apollyon. That explains why they have siege warfare and siege tactics when that wasn't something historical Vikings had. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you for clarifying that. Now I get it. They learned it from the knights. Got it. 
No, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. That's fine. That makes sense in the context of this world. I'm not, I'm not mad. Totally makes sense. Making sure that I got all the um, eye icon things. Whoa! Dodge those arrows. Dodge those arrows. Oh, I've got to reach Runa and Helvar? I've been running around doing nothing. Man! I'm sorry, guys. I was wasting y'all's time. Let's get to him. Okay, guys. Now we can go. Sorry for the wait. Let's go. For our brothers. And for our mothers. And our fathers. And our pets. And Fluffy. Don't forget Fluffy. All right, now I just got to get through a brawl. There's actually more snow on the ground than dirt, buddy. Let's turn the snow red. Try that line. Ah, revenge, you inconsistent, spammable Super Saiyan ability. Before anyone questions me on it, yes, I do think of Revenge as Super Saiyan. Alright. Please let me die. I'm sorry, could you tone it down a little? I know you're outside, but use an indoor voice for God's sake. I'm sorry, who's she looking for? I'm, I'm, I can't figure it out. Please, say Raider one more time, I beg you. What are you doing among the Warborn? You talk too much. No, you scream too much. She just screams all the time. My goodness. Are you gonna fight me? Thank you. You'll never beat me. Um, I'm sorry, you haven't touched me yet. Yeah, what was that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yell louder. I did that to shut her up, guys. They took Warborn captives? Interesting. Oh my gosh. It's Uncle Bubba. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> that good. My thanks. Don't disappoint me, y'all. My God, she's swole. <laughs> it's all funny. <laughs> All right, let's grab some weapons. Now it was time to take back our birthright. All right, that is seen. That seems to be it. Okay, guys, that was a lot of fun. So, not a lot really happened here. Looks like we were just freeing the warborn, freeing some Viking uh, captives. And on that note, we can mention that Vikings did take slaves. They did. They took. They would take captives and they would take them back to their towns and villages, and they would put them to work. You know, or have sex with them you know it, it was possible these things that happened but anyway um 
all that said, lots of fun doing this one. It was a bit shorter. Uh, sorry I got a little distracted there. I was answering questions and went a little off the rail. But hey, hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any more questions uh, that you want me to answer as I go through these, please leave them in the comments below. If you just want to tell me how much you like this series, again, leave it in the comments below. I love reading your comments and I'll try to get back to you. Um, if you like, please give a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, please consider, consider subscribing by hitting the little bell icon. But you all know how to YouTube by now, I hope. And I will see you in the next story analysis where we go over when it comes up. Wood, iron, and steel. Okay, guys, I will see you then. Take care, guys, and stay safe.